Welcome to Garden of Life Online News with your anchor Hadasa Emuna and co-anchor Ishayahu Sio. Welcome to this edition of the Parsi Weekly News. This week's Torah portion is Vayera, which means and he appears. You can find this week's Torah portion in Genesis 18:1 to Genesis 22:24. In this week's Torah portion, God reveals Himself to Abraham three days after the first Jews' circumcision at age 99. But Abraham rushes off to prepare a meal for three guests who appear in the desert heat. Who are angels disguised as men announces that in exactly one year Sarah will give birth to a son. Sarah laughs. <laughs> yeah, right. Abraham pleads with God to spare the wicked city of Sodom. Two of the three disguised angels arrive in the doomed city, where Abraham's nephew Lot extends his hospitality to them and protects them from the evil intentions from the Sodomite mob. The two guests reveal that they have come to overturn the place and to save Lot and his family. Lot's wife turns into a pillar of salt when she disobeys the command not to look back at the burning city as they flee. While taking shelter in a cave, Lot's two daughters, believing that their that them and their father are the only ones left alive in the world, get their father drunk, lie with him, and become pregnant. The two sons born from this incident become the fathers of Moab and Ammon. Abraham moves to Gerar, where the Philistine king Abimelech takes Sarah, who is presented as Abraham's sister, to his palace. In a dream, God warns Abimelech that he will die unless he returns the woman to her husband. Abraham explains that he feared he would be killed over the beautiful Sarah. God remembers his promise to Sarah and gives her and Abraham a son who is named Isaac, which in Hebrew is Yitzhak, meaning "will laugh."、Uh -huh. Isaac is circumcised at the age of eight days. Abraham is one hundred years old and Sarah ninety at their child's birth. Hagar and Ishmael are banished from Abraham's home and wander in the desert. God hears the cry of the dying lad and saves his life by showing his mother a well. Abimelech makes a treaty with Abraham at Beersheba, where Abraham gives him seven sheep as a sign of their truce. Sheep. God tests Abraham's devotion by commanding him to sacrifice Isaac on Mount Moriah, which is today the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Isaac is bound and placed on the altar, and Abraham raises the knife to slaughter his son. But then a voice from heaven calls to tell him to stop. A ram caught in the undergrowth by its horns is offered in Isaac's place. Finally, Abraham receives the news of the birth of a daughter, Rebekah, to his nephew. Bethuel. Well, that just about wraps up this edition of the Garden of Life. This just in: Abraham and Sarah are willing to give us an interview. Let's switch over right now. So, Abraham, what was your experience with the three visitors? Well, I remember like it was yesterday. I was in my tent in the middle of the day. It was so hot that day. I remember. So I took these three strangers in the shade, and I bathed their feet, and I gave them to eat. Then the three strangers said, "I got a word from my Shem for you. You're gonna be a father. Your wife Sarah is gonna give birth to your son." <laughs> to my surprise, I couldn't believe it. My wife Sarah, ninety years old. Can you believe it? Ninety years old. How could I forget that day? 
It was a day that it was so embarrassing. Do you remember, my dear? I do remember. I could not believe it. You were standing behind the tent, in front of the tent, and I was behind you. And I heard them say that I was going to have a child. And I couldn't help it. I laughed and I said, could this be possible? A 90-year-old woman can have a child. This is not possible. And do you remember at that moment when the angel, he came to you and he said, Why did you laugh, Sarah? And I said, No, I did not laugh. And he said, Oh, yes, you did laugh. And when I heard that voice, I was so embarrassed and I was so afraid because I realized that it was a shame. And then he said, Is this anything too hard for the Lord? Nothing is too hard for Hashem. Nothing is too hard for Hashem. <laughs> Did the visitors mention anything else while you were with them? Oh yes, uh, something very shocking. I remember they mentioned something about Sodom and Gomorrah. How Hashem was going to come and destroy the whole city with fire. And I asked Hashem, Hashem, if there's 50 people, righteous people, will you spare the city? And Hashem said to me, if there's 50 people, I will spare the city. And I said to Hashem, Hashem, if there's 20 people, will, will you spare the city? And Hashem said to me, Yes, for 20 people, I will spare the city. And Hashem ended up destroying Sodom and Gomorrah. So why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? What was the city like? It was a terrible city. Yes, indeed. No one was kind. They were robbing each other, stealing from each other mistreating the guests you know like that you always treat the guests with kindness that's why Hashem always said that he he loved the way you sustain the house you always treat people with kindness that was a very terrible day I still remember hearing the noise yes Wow, what a story! Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Well, this just about wraps up this edition of the Garden of Life We Online Weekly News. This is Hadassah and Rana and Isha Yagusion reporting live from Jerusalem, Israel. Shabbat Shalom! So to draw Pasha Vayera, first I'm going to start with Abraham and the angel. So Abraham in the painting is a little bit higher than the angel, like where his foot is. So I'm going to start where with his gown, right here. I'm going to go up, kind of caving in inwards a little bit. Then I'm going to kind of go into his beard a little bit. So kind of like go maybe like outward a little bit, go straight up again. Then make his nose that. And then just make the outline of his hat. So his hat kind of goes down like that. Like that. Then I'm just gonna put the inside of the hat. So right here, go down an angle like that. Go straight down and curve out like that. Make his face, kind of like, set all that hair, make his face. Pull all that pink stuff out there. Um, I'm gonna finish his beard by making it go inward a little bit here. And kind of going up like that. 
I'm gonna make his arm and hand next. So I'm gonna start here, just like this. Maybe a little bit higher. It seems like his arm would be a little bit higher. And then just make the glove. Like that. Make the sleeve. There. Voila. Abraham. But wait. Abraham doesn't have feet. Oh no. Go back to the bottom. We're gonna go straight down. Go straight. Go in an angle. Go up. Voila. Like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is make the angel behind Abraham. So, to do this, we're going to start also with um, the gown of the angel. It's, it's lower than Abraham's. So, I'm going to maybe start right about the line up of his feet. Go straight. Then we're, then we're going to curve inward like we did with Abraham. The only difference is, is that the angel is closer than what I made it. Angel needs to be closer to Abraham because the angel has his arm on Abraham's shoulder. So, therefore, they need to be closer. Like a lot closer than when I made it. Right about here, I'm going to curve inward. Curve and then kind of go straight up almost. Then, right about here, we're going to make his arm. So, his elbow or his arm here. Then we're going to make his elbow go up and touch Abraham. Make a sleeve like that. Maybe just make the hand right now. The little glove. <laughs> anyway, so once I have his elbow, I'm going to make his shoulder and go inward for like the back of his shirt. And then go down in a curve. This part's his arm, just so you know. Then I'm gonna go inward, go down for the rest of his gown. Down for the rest of his gown. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Make his glove hand. I love glove hands. They look so nice. Then I'm gonna make the angel's face. So, this might be a little complicated, but we got this. I'm going to do the outline of his beard, start there, then go to his head, curve out for his hat, get like that. Then I'm going to go straight down, almost, make his little nose, and then go straight down for the rest of his beard. Maybe I'll fix his nose a little bit, looks a little really big, really big nose. There, that looks better. Then I'm just gonna make the outlines inside. I'm gonna start with this hat, finish off this hat. Then, kinda make his face. Go down like that. Make it curve more. Like that. Then make the rest of his beard. So right here, you have his neck. And then it's overcome by a lot of hair. The beard. Next we're gonna make the angel's shoes, right? We need feet, gotta have feet. So I'm gonna go down, straight, curve for his like foot, and then go up. his other shoe, foot, feet. There. Okay, now that we have Abraham and the angel done, um, wait a sec, hold on, I'm gonna erase the inside markings inside Abraham. Like that, okay. You wanna make sure that you don't have any in markings from Abraham inside this guy's sleeve. So you wanna make sure that's done. Next, what we're going to do is make the horizon and the city. So, let's start here, about here. I'm just going to do the outline of the land. 
Now remember, the line's not perfectly straight. So, I'm gonna stop right about here for the city, because the city's gonna go here. Now I'm gonna start with the city. So I'm just kind of making a bunch of squares everywhere. So, smaller squares, bigger squares, rectangles. Maybe even like unique buildings. So you can get creative. Maybe just like overlaps in buildings. Like that. You want to start going up as if like the city's getting bigger and bigger as it gets closer to the middle. So maybe a two story house. I don't know. Well, they could exist. Bottom like that. Just make a big house. And then maybe some smaller houses on top. So something like that. Like that. So the next thing I'm gonna do for the houses, I'm just gonna make like a little Another rectangle inside, just like for the door. Next, I'm just gonna make the um, the sand dune markings of the city. So I just kind of like make a bunch of curved lines on the bottom. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is make the other two angels going to the city to destroy the city, the evil city of Sodom. So what we're going to do for them, they're going to be a lot smaller than this angel and Abraham. Because they're further down the distance. It's kind of like perspective. It's a perspective. Ooh, perspective. I'm kidding. Anyway, I'm going to start with their gown again. Their gown again. I'm going to go up. Angle. And then just kind of make the outline of their face. Almost. Something like that. Maybe I wouldn't want to make the mask any. Make them a little bigger. Like that. Then make another one further up. Almost. Like that. Make some outlines for their beards. make the outline for their gown where it ends. Like that. Maybe add a little arm. So, like that. So in the painting portion, you'll do like all the other lines for the sand. But right now, for the drawing, this is what you want to do. So other than that, that's how you draw the drawing for Vieira. So right now, we're going to be painting the painting Vieira. And in this painting, you can see Abraham right here, and he's watching the two angels going to Sodom to rescue Lot. And right here is Hashem comforting him and telling him it's going to be okay. Here is the city of Sodom where that's going to be destroyed. And all of this is like desert terrain. So we'll go ahead and just paint this in. We're going to start with um, Abraham, and just to do that, I'm going to be using his, making his cloak like green. And then I'm going to be doing like a little um, kind of like head thing. And then his beard and his face and his feet. Then we'll go over here and we'll do paint this cloak blue and the same kind of thing. And a little blue hat as well. And then we'll do a little angels with red and an orange cloak. And then we'll do the whole terrain and then the city and the sky last. so that we can kind of distinguish his arm from the rest of his little cloak. I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to his arm. Next, I'm gonna do his little head piece here and I'm just gonna be using brown for that, dark brown. Now I'm gonna do his face 
and I'll just be using like a lighter brown for that color. So in this week's Torah portion, um, the Parsha, right, Vayira, we read that Abraham, he was at the entrance of his tent at noon on Passover. Why was he there? Well, he was there resting from the third day of his circumcision. It was the most painful day of all. Yet Abraham, despite the pain, was a man of great kindness, and his goal in life was to speak to every person that traveled by his tent about God. So basically, every time people passed by his tent, he would go out, greet them, asked if they needed anything. So even though he was in so much pain, he did this. He would make sure that every person that sat to eat with him would not leave until they blessed the creator of the world. And when Abraham saw these three men, this guy, this guy, and Hashem, when he saw them walking towards him from a distance, he perceived that they were from God. And even with his excruciating pain, he got up and ran towards them to wash their feet and feed him. Have you ever been in extreme pain, either physical or mental or spiritual, and you just did something good anyway? Well, that's what Abraham did. He was a blessing and he was listening to what God wanted him to do, even when he was in pain. He sets the example for us. So for this coat and hat, I'm going to be using blue. Sort of like a royal blue. Here it says that it's bright blue. So when you're painting the, the cloak, you want to try to make it all flow down in one direction. So either paint it all this way or paint it all this way. One or the other, not both. That way it's like more realistic and like it's going in one direction. In our painting, it's important that we have perspective. And what that basically is, like if you have a scene happening like this, and in the scene something's farther away than something else, then the thing that's farther away, which in our case would be these people in the city, should be smaller than whatever's in front, than whatever is closer. So since Abraham and Hashem are closer, they're bigger in the picture. But since these angels are farther away, they're smaller. For the sandals, I'm just going to switch to a smaller angle brush. This is a number zero. If you don't have a number zero, that's okay. But I'm just going to use brown and be very detailed with the sandals. So go like on the bottom and then straps. I'm also going to be using that brush for just like an, some, an eye and like a mouth for Abraham. And for that I'll just use a darker color. Okay, so they're done. Now I'm going to be working on the two angels going over here to rescue Lot. And same concept, just smaller. I'm going to be painting this one, their cloak red, and this one orange. And then again their hair and beard and face. So some commenters say that whenever Abraham got travelers that came to his tent, just in case that they had been in a place of idol worship, he would always wash their feet. And so because of this, we see the personality of Abraham, right? He's a man who loved God in such a way that he was willing to do anything to maintain a relationship with the Creator. And that's how we should be. We should be always wanting to do whatever we can to have a relationship with God. That's what he wants, right? Like in the Garden of Eden, he wanted a relationship with Adam and Eve. He walked around with them. He had a relationship. And how can you have a relationship with God? You can pray. Praying is like talking to Him. How do you maintain a relationship with a friend? Well, you talk to them. You ask them about themselves. You learn about them. That's exactly what you need to do with God. Pray and talk to Him. Now I'm going to go ahead and work on my 
city over here and I'm just going to be using like some yellow and brown, mostly yellow because for the ground I'm going to be using more of a brown so I want it to be able to separate the city from the ground. I'll be using my number four angle brush and then these two colors that are on my palette, yellow and brown. We ran out of paper plates, so I cut up a, a cardboard box and made it into my palette. And it doesn't have to be perfect. There, there are buildings made of stones and bricks and stuff. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So Abraham's nephew Lot lives in this city, this evil city. And we see in the Bible that Abraham and Lot separated paths, right? Lot's, Lot's uh, flocks were too big, and so were Abraham's, and they just couldn't stay together. So they had to part ways. And Abraham said, okay, pick which side you want. Right, Abraham being the bigger man. Pick which side you want, I'll just choose whatever you don't choose. I probably would have been like, I want this side, you get the other side. <laughs> but no, Abraham let Lot decide. And Lot chose the side that was greener, but it came with a price. It had a wicked city in it, like Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham asked for God to save Lot. God did. Something that we learn in this Parsha, this Torah portion, is that nothing, no thing is too hard for the Lord, for He is the creator of all things. And we can find comfort in knowing that, right? That nothing's too hard for God. I'm sure there's things that are too hard for you or that you think you can't do or something like that. But if we just imagine or if we just believe that God can do anything, that nothing's too hard for God, that would make our lives better, I think. Every person has something that's too hard for him. But the great thing is that God does it. Nothing's too hard for God. Because he's the creator of all things. Okay, that's my city. It's a work in progress, but we'll make it work. Now what we're gonna do is just the hills and terrain that they're all standing on. And for that, I'm just going to be using um, some brown, a little bit of white actually. And it's just a really light color. Feel free to experiment with which colors you wanna use. I'll be using different colors and experimenting myself. It's kind of like a little hilly terrain, a type of hill. So we'll just be doing like different kind of strokes so that we make it look like a hill. So this is what my palette looks like for this. I have a couple of different types of brown for like deserty sand kind of hilly place and then white so I can mix them, mix them together. I'm gonna be using my angle brush so that I can do things like this and stuff, okay? So you can kind of intertwine these hills and stuff. We're trying to make it look like a hill terrain. So where I live, it's kind of flat. There's like no hills. But you may live where there's lots of hills. Are you, If you've ever been hiking, on mountains or hills or something, you know it's very high terrain. This right here is kind of like our horizon line, which is another art term. It's basically where things start or end. Like here, it's where our sky starts and it's where our desert ends. And it's kind of like the point where everything revolves around in your painting. So just be careful that when you're doing your desert tea area, one, 
when you go over here not to make it the same color as their beard. And two, not to just paint over your people. It almost reminds me of like an ocean. Oh, and waves. Something that we can also see from this tour portion is that God really wanted a type of relationship with Abraham. He had a relationship, right? But God wants that relationship, the same kind of relationship he had with Abraham, he wants it with his creation, right? And that's really what the redemption is for. When God, at the end of the Millennial Kingdom, when he redeems all of creation and the world, there will be no crime, there will be no tears, no death, everything will be perfect, that then he'll have a perfect relationship with his creation in the new creation. And that's what the redemption is all about. When he redeems his creation, he'll have a perfect relationship with it. Throughout the Bible, we see that God had relationships with different people. And even an entire people, right? We see the relationship God had with Israel, the children of Israel later, we see that. But right now, we see the relationship with Abraham, and he wants the same relationship with you. And if you have too much paint, like I said before, just take your brush and just scoop it up. Another option is just to paint the whole thing in one direction, and then just try to like, kind of like bold out some areas with a darker color, so it kind of looks like hilly terrain. Like Abraham, even if we are in the deepest pain of our life, right, physically, emotionally, spiritually, like Abraham, we must always be ready to run towards God and offer the best of us. How can we offer the best of us? By doing things even when we don't want to do it, doing things to the best of our ability. Even when we don't feel like it, that's how we can offer the best of us. Doing things even when people are not looking, doing good things, right? Even when no one can see you, doing the right thing. That's the best of us. We always need to offer our best of us, like Abraham. Abraham sat his guests under a tree, and he bringing safety and comfort. In the same way, any person should feel safe and comfortable around us, like Abraham, right? His guests were comfortable, they were sitting under a tree, under the shade, in the desert. It was nice, right? They were comfortable. They were comfortable with Abraham. Well, just like Abraham, people should be comfortable when they're with us, right? Kind of like hospitality, having people over. I know that's something I love to do, have friends over and family. Abraham had really like a servant's heart. He wanted to serve. He served his guests. He served them bread and, and food and he had them comfortable. He had them sit and he served. I'm just going to turn my painting over so that I can do the other side. Abraham, he served when his guests came, he served them milk and bread. In the same way, we must be always ready to serve anyone that passes through our lives with the word of God, symbolized by milk, and with kindness and giving them the bread of the word, right? Without leaven and without sin. So when we, whenever we have the opportunity to serve people or guests or friends, we should serve them with what? The word, right? Without yeast, without sin. The word is perfect. And who wouldn't want a perfect food, right? That's what the word is. It's like food, but it tastes perfect. You can't taste any better. Now I'll go ahead and switch to a smaller angle brush so I can do in here and around their feet and things. So here we're painting around their sandals and their feet, right? Well, if you're walking around in the desert wearing flip-flops or open-toed shoes, imagine how much sand you would get, how dirty your feet would get. No wonder Abraham cleaned his, the guest's feet, right? Today, 
in this day and age, we don't clean our guests' feet. But back then, that was probably a common thing because everyone was traveling around in sandals. So now I'm just going to take some light colors and just do some like highlights for some mountainy terrain. Abraham, when his guests came, he gave them meat, like food. And so in the same way that Abraham offered them meat, we must always be ready to share the depths, symbolized by meat. We must always be ready to share the depths of, God word, of God's word and his revelation with the testimony of our lives and with a humble heart. So it's a different story if you share the word and you're like, and you have to or you're forced to or something like that. But if you share the word with a humble heart and you just wait for God to do whatever his plan is, then it will really have an impact. That's the best kind. So for the top here, for the sky, you can also experiment with this. And we're kind of looking for like a dark, darker kind of sky-ish type of thing like cloudy. So for that effect, I'll be using just a little bit, very little bit of light gray to get that effect of a cloudy sky. And I'm just using my flat brush and using just the top of it and just kind of like swiping. A very important thing to remember is that when God promises something, we need to be careful not to laugh at his promises like Sarah did, right? For he is a God of all possibilities. He can do all things. And he requires of us that we believe in him, that we have faith. And, and we have to believe that he is capable of doing far beyond our human reasoning. So sometimes we think that, oh, that can't possibly happen. It's not logical. There's no way that can happen. But well, we have to remember that God is outside of our logical thinking and of our reasoning, and so he can do anything. Sarah laughed at what he said would come true. She was probably using reason, reasoning, oh, that can never happen, that's impossible. But it's important that we remember that all things are possible through God. So I hope you enjoy painting by Yira with me. Again, just to explain the painting one more time. This is Hashem, he means comforting and talking with Abraham, Abraham about what he's going to do to Sodom. And then these are his two angels going out to rescue Lot.